hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Stefan. I work for Protocol Labs. I'm going to give you a quick overview on the Falcon project and uh, current state of the network. First and foremost, everyone knows by now, otherwise you wouldn't be here, Filecoin is the crypto-powered storage network that creates a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation of humanity's information. And we see ourselves as the storage network of Web3. Now, what is um, our main focus area today? One, um, all of you in the room here are sort of innovators, entrepreneurs, early adopters of our stack, and thank you very much for being here. But for us to truly scale this out and take it to the masses, to really like bring those early majority adopters, late majority adopters onto our network stack, we have to make sure that our stack is not only scalable for Web3, but also scalable for the web as it exists today. Which means we have to bring those legacy Web2 customers, Web2 thinkers to our platform. Second, um, today, as we see it, we are by nature, and you'll see multiple examples. You've already heard from NFT or Web3 storage, NFT storage. You'll hear more uh, later this afternoon. But our goal is to really bring this to the masses by truly scaling our network. And that network scalability is going to come through uh, our master plan. And our master plan exists of three steps. Number one, amass a ton of network or amass a ton of storage and bring it to the decentralized network. Two, onboard a ton of sa uh, safeguard humanities data. And three, bring compute to the data to enable web scale apps. Number one, we're making a ton of progress. In the last two years, because this month we've existed for two years, so we've been on mainnet for two years, we have accumulated more than 4,000 storage providers or storage systems out there across 44 different countries. Plus, uh, we have accumulated more than 16 Abbey bytes of capacity onto our network, which is incredible. Some will say that 10 years ago, this was the size of the three largest cloud providers together. So today, we're making an, a huge um, growth into the space, and we are accelerating not only um, as we bring on new storage providers, but we're accelerating in a couple of regions. In the last 10 months, uh, since the beginning of 2022, we saw the network power grow by, grow by 37%, with the major regions being North America and uh, Korea, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Obviously, we want to continue that into Europe, as we hear in Lisbon, but a massive growth and a continued acceleration of not only new storage providers coming on board in emerging countries, but also existing storage providers that are growing their ongoing capacity. Not only that, uh, we're actually getting a ton of support from the legacy tier one hardware vendors that have contributed to our stack and to our ecosystem. Uh, Seagate is one of them. We'll actually hear more from them this afternoon. Uh, AMD and Supermicro are only a few to call out, and more are lined up to help us with this ecosystem. What does that mean? That means that we're not just a software stack anymore. We're actually collaborating end to end and looking at innovation across the full stack. Second, we are also building new programs. Since the last 10 months, we have seen multiple accelerated programs that have stood up environments to help actually st storage providers uh, on how to become a true Falcon storage provider. So if you're a Web2 business, you're interested in becoming a storage provider, check out some of these accelerated programs. ESPA is one of them. More than 50 businesses have now graduated or in the process of graduating as to become a Falcon storage provider. So massive adoption. We're making a ton of good progress. Now we're moving into stage two. Today, we are in phase two. We're actually onboarding a ton of uh, user data onto the network. I'm not just talking about NFTs. We're talking about large data sets, and we'll give you some examples. So since the beginning of this year, and you can see this green graph, which indicates how much growth or how much data is actually being stored on our network. You actually, we have actually seen up till yesterday, I had to update my slide. By the way, we have to update our slides daily now, uh, as we are onboarding almost three pips, three pebby bytes of data on a daily basis, and it's only going up. We have a total of 280 pebby bytes of actual data stored on the network, which is incredible. And as you can see, this graph, graph is exponential. And as our growth is expanding now, eight, eight and a half times since the beginning of this year, we only, can see, uh, we only continue to see the growth coming from all around the world. 
people are storing videos, pictures, NFTs, you name it. Uh, it's a perfect fit for um, uh, Falcon. So if you dive a little deeper, what it actually means is like on a monthly basis, we're actually growing 25%. And second, we have actually more than 1,000 unique clients that have been storing data onto the network up till today. And of those 1,000 clients, we have 15% storing more than 100 tebibytes of data. That means they're storing large data sets, which is incredible. Our goal for the end of this year was uh, 350 tebibytes. The way we're going right now, we're going to probably end more than 400 pebibytes if the growth continues as is. Which means next year, we're setting a target for two ebibytes of capacity. We need everyone's help, but this is enormous. So what type of data is being stored? Well, one, I mentioned we have NFTs. We have large data sets. But in general, the way customers store data onto our network is through on-ramps, on-ramps that are specialized specifically for the use case. Web 3 storage is in the back. NFT.storage is very focused on NFT marketplaces. And some of our storage providers are building their own tooling. Some of them are building S3 interfaces or scripts to easily move data into the network. Um, because um, not only is it um, scalable and decentralized, the cost is extremely, is extremely efficient, and we're currently less than 0.1% of a traditional Amazon or hyperscaler uh, uh, cost. All right, so we have a couple of examples. You'll hear more about it. But today, Web2 Storage itself, as one on-ramp alone, has more than 140 million uploads, which is just incredible. And besides that, we're not just storing um, smaller data sets. We're storing large data sets like the Internet Archive, um, USC Shoah Foundation, which we'll hear more about uh, tomorrow as well, Flickr. We we'll work with a ton of foundations to upload uh, real data, preserve it for long-term retention. And so a lot of researchers today are using our stack and actually, as a matter of fact, you'll hear a new announcement today, later today, of a new research department that is actually a major um, institution that's using our stack as well. But we have UC Berkeley. We have New York City that's storing open data sets. And a ton of researchers love our stack because when you're a researcher, you want to research your data. You want to find more insights. Uh, most of these researchers want to spend that, that budget to compute and want to offload a lot of their costs off to a more cost-efficient platform. And that's, of course, where Falcon comes in. All right, so when you look at the total amount of startups, we're not just building tooling. We're also building businesses. We have seen today more than 500 teams have created projects that are in a funding stage on our network, which is incredible. This is just a continuation, again, of the fact that we're not just building a network. We're building an ecosystem. We're building businesses on top of Falcon, which is incredible. And we're helping, as Ruben mentioned, right, with funding, with training, and introduce introductions to investors and so on. Last but not least, we are to enable the enterprises to move and bridge that gap between Web 2 and Web 3. We are today announcing a new alliance, an alliance of tier one um, vendors in the world that are coming together to help bring Falcoin, IPFS, and LibP2P to the enterprise space. We call that the Decentralized Storage Alliance. That is, a, this will be active from today. We have a new website, and we have a full um, we already have some founding members today that will actually be sitting on the panel this afternoon. Uh, we have Ernst & Young, AMD, and Seagate as one of the three uh, founding partners that have come together to build this alliance together with Protocol Labs and the Falcon Foundation, which is, with its main goal um, to create training, education, and unique innovation for Web2 customers, enterprise customers, you name it, to move uh, into Web3. So very excited about that. Again, a testament to how important this technology really is, and not just, not just to us, not just to entrepreneurs, but also to existing large um, tier one vendors in the world that are building the hyperscalers or helping to build the hyperscalers and the enterprise solutions. Last but not least, I'm not going to go too much in detail, is bring compute to, compute to data. 
Um, and we enable, that will help us enable uh, building web scale applications onto our, our network. Obviously, FVM is super crucial as we implement smart contracts and bring the EVM compatible uh, capability to our, uh, our network. And next, we'll have Raul and Molly go into the details. But this is where the compatibility with the Ethereum virtual uh, machine will allow a tons of new use cases and open up a whole DeFi um, ecosystem and will allow us to create perpetual storage and auto renewing deals and so on, which opens up a whole new billion dollar market for us as here at Filecoin. Second is then bring the large scale computation, because if, if you look at our storage providers, they already invested in compute, storage and networking. So we have an, a, a perfect network to actually leverage to not only store but also compute data. So we're partnering with a ton of vendors, a ton of blockchains, and are building layer twos on top of Falcon that will actually enable you to compute that data where it resides. This, again, will enable a ton more ut utilization. And then last but not least, the next gen um, ability, which is our consensus or hierarchical consensus capability, will not just allow us to run those applications, but it will allow us to run those applications much faster. Here it's all about transactions per second, where we'll move from hundreds, hundreds of transactions per second to billions of transactions per second, which, again, will open up a ton more usability, utility, and um, this is an amazing technology stack that will eventually get us to the web scale um, capability to uh, support not just Web3, but also Web2. So thank you very much. Help us, everyone. And I'll see you later this afternoon.